Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jacqueline Dorsey of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. I'm excited to bring to you today a short webinar facilitated by David Beach. David is the founder of Leader Sites, a nonprofit organization dedicated to guiding leaders of organizations to improve the quality of life of people and communities through learning and improvement activities. Please note that this session will be recorded if you want to refer back to it later. So for now, let me turn things over to David. Thanks, Jacqueline. Hi, everybody. Um, I wanted to uh, I want to talk a little bit about something that's been on my mind um, and that's been getting a lot of attention in literature these days. A lot of people are talking about leader standardized work. Um, I've been teaching lean either at the University of Kentucky on my own or at Ohio State um, for a good long time, and we've always kind of tried to figure out what, what is the right format for this leader standard work. What, what can we do to make leader standard work a little bit more effective? And we tie it into hosting planning, we tie it into visual management systems. Um, but most of what I've seen come out of this uh, are really just kind of fancy checklists for things that you're supposed to do daily, weekly, and monthly. Uh, and I got to thinking about this because, you know, when I, when I teach standardized work um, for other functions, it's always about we want to document the way that this work is done so that we can get better performance from our people and so that we can develop their skills. We also want to make those problems stand out, and, and in order to make those problems stand out and build those skills, there's got to be some, some kind of specificity to it. And to me, the checklist, while it's, it's, it's very effective in making sure that the required things get done, um, I'm not sure it's really building the kinds of leadership skills that we need to be building. And if we're using standardized work to build basic working skills in the organization, uh, maybe we should reconfigure our leader standardized work to develop the specific leadership skills that we want. Okay, so I want to start with a little study, look at, at behavior. Um, if I can get my slide to go, there we go. Uh, and of course, behavior is action. It's action-oriented stuff. Uh, and every action, according to scientists, says whether you believe it or not, uh, everything we do is preceded by some kind of conscious thought, however fleeting that might be. Uh, we'll call that the deciding cycle. Um, and you know that uh, sometimes the way we think um, is not always guaranteed to deliver the right, the right kind of action. Uh, and so after the action, there's always some kind of consequence or some kind of result in this performing piece of the cycle. Now the consequence could be good or bad. Uh, and based on that consequence, uh, if we as humans take the time to reflect on that consequence and what we did and how we thought about that before, we ought to be able to learn something from that. So I've got this learning loop that shapes our thinking. Okay, we talk a lot about changing culture in Lean and how we need to change a culture and, and how culture is really the definition, uh, is really just the collective way things are done. So it's a collective set of behaviors, the way we do things. Um, Lean kind of targets the way people work, that action piece, and that, that's something we can actually affect in a workplace. I can change a working area, reconfigure uh, equipment, reconfigure data, reconfigure uh, anything that I need to do work, and I can actually require people to do different things without really affecting the way they think about it at all. Now we know that for a permanent culture change, we've really got to target that way of thinking. Um, so if we're going to target the way leaders think, uh, there are studies like um, Alan Deutschman's Change or Die that really focus on when you change the way people act and you require them to stay this new course, that change in the way they act actually affects the way they think over time. It takes a while. Um, so in, in short, it's, it's really hard to get somebody to change their mind about anything. Uh, no matter what you do or say, people think the way they think. It's based on, you know, however many years of experience they got, they're going to think the way they think. Um, but Deutschman actually showed several case studies where by changing the environment that people lived and worked and the way they did things, that actually had uh, an effect on the way they thought about things over the long term. So 
I'm kind of counting on that to carry me through. I can't change the way you as a leader think about the way you work, but you know, if I'm your leader, I can change the way you work. And if we're building standardized work for leaders to develop a different set of skills, then maybe eventually I can change the way you think about those same kind of things and I can create the kind of leaders that I want that I know will have a positive effect on the workplace. And when I talk about these critical skills, there's really only four critical skills um, that I want to identify. Uh, the first is I want my leaders to be able to effectively challenge people. Uh, challenge, uh, unlike most of us use challenge, it's not to confront, but uh, in, in my view, challenge is effective goal setting. How do you challenge people to reach that level of performance? Pretty critical skill for a lean organization. I want you to be able to encourage people uh, to try to accept that challenge. When they try to accept that, or when they try and don't achieve that challenge because they've done something wrong, then it's our job as leaders to correct that behavior. And then finally, we want to provide the right kind of support. Now, these are these are pretty broad areas. Um, so I'm going to break this down a little bit further, but I want you to keep in mind these four things are absolutely essential if we're going to be effective leaders in any organization. They also happen to be pretty effective for parenting uh, because we do want to challenge our kids, we encourage the kids, we correct the kids when they need it, and we support them, uh, and we do that uh, with, with love, and there's no reason why we can't do the same thing for our workforce. So the one I want to start with is, is this encourage piece. And so how, how would standardized work look to teach a leader how to encourage somebody. Um, so I put together a job breakdown sheet and you can see it's, it's kind of a standard three column job breakdown sheet. Uh, I've got header information up there of course and I got major steps, I got key points, I got reasons why we do each one of the steps. I've also included a file name so people will be able to access this and then I want to make sure that we're reviewing this pretty regularly so I'll put the last review date on there. Notice in the major steps, there's, there's um, really seven things that I want you to do as a leader when we're going to encourage somebody, okay? And uh, these are all scientifically based. There's the key points that you can read. Uh, we're going to supplement this job breakdown sheet as we usually do with an operation work standards sheet, okay? That's more graphical. So I've got pictures for those same six. And the seventh step is to go back and check. So. Um, I want, instead of just doing a walkthrough, I want you to be looking for people who may need encouragement. I want you to ask directly an open-ended question to establish a relationship with the people you got in there. And then I want you to shut up and I want you to really listen to what they say. And listen without criticizing, listen without judging, just listen to them. Let them pour out their heart. For however much time you have allowed for that, do that. Then give some kind of positive affirmation, let them know that you understand what they're going through, share some perspective. Uh, if they're really feeling down, you might point out a time when they were really successful on something uh, and it's not always this way. Um, you don't want to specifically give advice or things like that, but you just want to share a perspective and, and again, encourage them to keep on going and then provide that support. Rather than telling what they should do, you know, ask them, how can you support them? Um, so I think those things are kind of buried within this encouraging job. There's a whole lot of things that leaders need to do. Uh, and there's a lot of talk about cadence calendars and everything in the leader standardized work literature. And so I put together a little cadence calendar that we might want to, to use. And um, just, again, this is all stuff I'm just playing with in my mind. So don't be too hard on me in your, in your emails and things. But, Notice I got a bunch of different standardized work elements here, and then I got a bunch of different behaviors down here. The behaviors are the things that I want leaders to actually demonstrate. Okay, and I've got a way to kind of hold people accountable to these. But I said these are the standardized work elements that should yield these types of behavior. And then here's our desired outcome for each one of those. Who owns that standardized work? Who's responsible for making sure that it's reviewed? and timely and being used effectively. So 
you know, it's encouraging, teaching and coaching, correcting, short interval checking. All of these are done daily, sometimes more than once a day. There's time in there for administration. Now what we've got for each one of these is we're going to have a, a set of standardized work, that job breakdown sheet and that operations work standard sheet for each one of those elements, just like that encouraging one. Sometimes we do two or three times a week. Sometimes we do weekly, sometimes we do monthly. And you can build this, whatever your values in your organization are, whichever behaviors you value in your leaders, um, put something in to ensure that they're actually making progress on this. And then of course we're gonna supplement this cadence calendar um, with a daily schedule, a leader's daily schedule. And we're gonna put this together um, every couple of days. Uh, it starts the day with a short interval check while walking through a little bird's eye view of how the system is working. And there's the standardized work that you can refer to for how to do that short interval check for the system. I put a bunch of buffer time in there because every leader I know has, regardless of how structured the workplace, there's always something that's going to require a little immediate action. And so I put buffers for correcting and coaching, and really these are buffers for you to build relationships with your people in there. And there's the lean standardized work, leader standardized work for coaching. Uh, then I want uh, the leaders to attend the huddle boards, uh, the huddles at the boards for uh, for their teams. And, and if it's if this was created for a, a leader at uh, maybe a first line supervisor who might have four teams uh, in his or her group. Um, we're going to make sure that they hit those teams on a recurring basis so they're not always going to team one's huddles and things like that. So I've got instructions for how to do the team huddle and you notice that's just basic standardized work not specifically leaders because everybody's got to know how to do the huddle. Then our process walkthrough, a little fish eye view where we're kind of swimming through the process to make sure things are working properly. Uh, this could be simply standing in your trusty ONO circle and observing the process. A little more buffer time than a meeting at the group board. So we're connecting with standardized work and then there's standardized work for the group huddle. Uh, more buffer, admin time for you to do all the BS that comes with being a leader. Uh, lunch with a specific team where we're scheduling listening time. Uh, that's something that uh, I think it's kind of an interesting idea um, for us to, to set time aside specifically to listen, not to coach, but just to listen to what's going on. Uh, it's, I think it's related to standing in that ONO circle observing without really interacting. How can we just get better at listening? I think it's a pretty critical leadership skill. So I want to make sure people are doing that. Okay. Another buffer, planning the next two days. So I'm going to build this schedule out for the next couple of days based on what's happening in all those huddles, based on what's happening in my performance scores, uh, based on what the priorities are for the organization. I want to set that up every day. So it's not like I'm doing the same thing every day. I want to have this kind of same calendar every, every day adjusted for what the priorities are. Okay. So now if we're going to have this kind of standardized work, we're going to give these kind of tools to leaders, we're going to expect these kinds of behavioral outcomes because we want leaders to display humility. We want leaders to encourage. We want leaders to goal set. We want leaders to listen. Um, I, I wanted to play around with some kind of, of evaluation. And what I've come up with, and I, I hope you'll give me some feedback on this. I've written about this. I've written about all this stuff um, in this forthcoming book. I got a book that's supposed to be released from Productivity Press in December. It's called Leader Sites, Creating Great Leaders Who Create Great Workplaces. Uh, and I've added some more detail on this, but this is still kind of just me thinking about this stuff. I want to see what you guys are doing to get that immediate corrective feedback back to those leaders. What I've come up with is, I'm calling it this simple circle kind of thing. And what I want is I want a 360 degree evaluation of a leader. And you know, there's nothing new about 360 degree evaluations. They've been around forever, but uh, most of them are these clunky kinds of questionnaires that you do once or twice a year and it gets kind of expensive because you got to send them off and have somebody interpret them and send the reports back and all this good stuff. And what I wanted to do is get this kind of in a real-time learning cycle so it's much quicker feedback to that leader. 
And what you see in this column here on this, and this is a public board. This is a board where we're transparent. We got it right next to the team information board or the group leaders information board, that tier two board. Um, and this is how we're driving these behaviors. Now, 360 degree takes your peers, your subordinates, and your, your supervisors uh, and gets their input on your specific behaviors related to these. So I want a set of these evaluated every week for every leader. So in week one, we might do a, a set of these. We might do humility, challenging, and supporting. And it's a simple, hey, you're doing uh, this, this one to seven kind of thing. You're crushing it. You're doing great. You can't do anything better with this. Or you're just, yeah, you're so-so. Or you really need to work on this kind of thing. Uh, so we'll have people come and score. The, the, the team can score right on the board. And you can put, like, uh, you got six guys on the team. Each one evaluates you based on one of these numbers. And we take an average of that. And then the supervisors come by. They know that on their gimbal walks, they're going to be doing this. So when they get to your board and they see that it's time for you to do these top three things, they're going to put their score on here. And then your peers are going to come by. And as they do their gimbal walks, same thing. They know every week they got to go and, and assess each other. So I'm going to end up with a board over a month that looks something like this. So we're apparently doing pretty well in the humility department. Uh, always getting blue. Uh, People think that and your goal setting are the two best things that you do. They're trending upward. That's what these triangles mean. Um, this is you're doing great, trending upward. You're doing good and trending upward. You're doing good but trending downward. You're not doing very good and getting worse. We've got to do something about that. Um, so you can tell we, we're using the triangle to indicate direction of movement instead of just a one-time shot. Um, again. Still playing around with this. So every week, something different. We're going to evaluate just on those. We're going to average that score. That's what determines whether you're blue, whether you're green, whether you're red, or whether it's yellow, based on that average score. Um, and we're going to develop an action plan. Okay, We're pretty bad at correcting. So hey, I want you to take three gimbal walks with Bob. See how Bob does this. And that's going to help you with listening as well. Um, to spark your curiosity, we're going to schedule you in the product development team and the Skunk Works, the Moonshine Mill, whatever you call your product development, your creative workplace. We're going to give you a chance to go in there for a few days and maybe explore some things that are on your mind. Um, and then the month changes, you erase this one, you start again. Um, if we want leaders who do, in fact, display these types of behavior, we got to tell them if they're doing it or not. Um, right now, I got to tell you, I don't know how many organizations would really be willing to publicly display this kind of thing, um, but we do it on uh, visual management boards anyway, where we're tracking our key performance indicators. Um, this is a kind of critical thing. We want to be able to identify leaders who can really take us to the future, and so I think it's a, I think it's important that we start helping them by giving them feedback with our hearts in the right place. So we're not trying to break them down or tear them down. We're trying to develop the skills that we need. If you take a look at all these, really there's only, there's only three things that leaders really need to be good at in order to change the, the whole face of their organization. And in the, in the book, I've kind of characterized these as leader sites. And, and that's loving, learning, and letting go. And I know we don't talk too much about love in a workplace, but if you think about what we need to do for our people and give them the, the resources and the support that they need, challenge them to reach higher levels, uh, encourage them to go after higher performance levels, everything that we do uh, really needs to have their best interest at heart. And we can only do that if we, if we decide we're going to love these folks. And this is a pretty hard decision because so many people do so many things that, that really just make us want to choke them instead of, of love them. But keep in mind that love is a decision that we make. It's not an emotion that drives anything. 
Um, that decision drives tons of other emotions. But if we can't behave as if we love our people, then we're never going to be truly effective leaders. Once we have that in mind, then we need to set out uh, about learning. And I want to learn everything I can about everybody that I can, about every process that I can, about everything that we do. So my life becomes about learning. And I can only learn through interacting with others. And finally, I've got to understand that uh, I cannot control everything. Uh, I don't care how big your scope as a leader really is. Uh, if we don't get really good at letting go and letting people try new things and letting people experiment, letting people fail and try again and work things out, uh, then it just makes our job really hard. So if we can learn, if we can love, learn, and let go, I think we'll all be better, more effective leaders. That's all I wanted to share today. Um, I know it was kind of short. Um, but I hope, you, I hope you got something to think about, and I hope you're willing to, uh, to get in this conversation with me so we can kind of re refine this and maybe make it something that people will actually try and something that we can use for the future. Um, again, I am after developing leaders for the future. And if we don't decide up front what kind of behaviors we want in our leaders, then we're likely to get bad behavior. So let's define those. Let's build standardized work to get those, let's monitor that, let's correct bad behavior, and then help these leaders every bit as much as we help our employees as they get better. So there's my email address, there's my phone number. I'd prefer an email or a text message. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Let's have this conversation. Thanks for listening to me, and I'll talk to you next time. Jacqueline? Jacqueline? <laughs> All right. Well, David. Um, thank you so much for facilitating our session today. Um, if you all are interested in learning more, David will also be speaking at the Lean Accounting Summit held in San Antonio later this month on August 25th through the 26th. So yes, should... to learn, oh, go ahead. You should come. <laughs> yes, we'd love to have you. Um, so if you want to learn more, visit www.leanaccountingsummit.com. And we have a discount code if you are interested in coming to everyone who's tuning in today. So to get that uh, discount, just type in webinar when you're registering, and that will give you 10% off the summit price. So again, that is webinar, and you'll get 10% off the summit price when you are registering. So to wrap up, I want to remind you all that today's webinar is being recorded. So look for an email following our time together for a link to the recording. And feel free to share this throughout your organization. So again, thank you, David. And thanks to each of you for participating in today's session. Goodbye. Thanks, everybody.